Hello, this is another update on this bunch of tools that I'm working on to do with uh, using geometric algebra for making new ways of interacting with the stuff that we uh, work with as, as computer scientists. Um, this uh, couple of this. So here I'm going to focus on this sort of uh, game like presentation of the ideas. Um, uh, yeah, this is sort of for kids or let's say sort of for adults who want to learn uh, geometric algebra. Um, and what I have here is a Unity window. Um, uh, this allows, uh, yeah, Unity because uh, I want it to be a game with like particle effects and nice sound effects and this kind of thing. Um, so I can pick up, uh, these are planes, uh, planes and with a certain, let's say, clockwise orientation. And these ones now have an anti-clockwise orientation because I've moved them over to there. Um, uh, or I'm look looking at them from a different angle, and these are lines, and I can sort of put a line, and it's now at the intersection of these two planes. Uh, it automatically snaps into place, um, and automatically updates when I do that. Um, it, this is projective geometric algebra, so in theory I could put a point at the intersection of these two lines at infinity, uh, which would be super useful for certain things. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot there right now, but uh, it was, you know, just to uh, try making something in this kind of direction using Unity. Um, but I, I kind of put this by, uh, to, to the side for a moment um, uh, to do other things. And I'm quite glad I did that because I've learned a lot more geometric algebra in the last couple of years. Um, so uh, this is uh, separately a visualization of conformal geometric algebra. Um, well, specifically the con the geometric algebra of one dimension of one conformal transformations in one dimensional space. Uh, that is a terribly boring thing to um, uh, be thinking about, like transformations in one dimension. What does that even mean? Um, but it's very useful because uh, conformal geometric algebra scales up to arbitrary dimensions. Um, so you can do conformal transformations in three dimensions that model magnetic fields um, or other conformal transformations, which you can use again in computer graphics. Um, so what does this thing do though? Uh, we have the, we've got a plane here, we've got a cone, we've got uh, a circle I'll draw your attention to in there. We've got a line here. Um, and uh, it is the case that I can move this plane um, and now it, it's always going through this spine here um, and it has a projection line going down to this line um, and it's got a part going up to the parabola as well. And this is how conformal geometric algebra works. You model points in one dimension um, has planes two dimensions higher, which sounds like overkill, but um, conformal transformations are quite rich. Uh, you can, so in one dimensional space, you can do uh, scalings up and down. You can do reflections and uh, of this line, of the stuff on this line, and you can do inversions. So like choose two points on the line. We're going to keep them fixed. We're going to take everything that's uh, that's not between these two points and put it in between the two points. And we take everything that was between the two points and put it out here. Um, and I've realized that this is a very nifty way of visualizing various transformations that you want to do with scalars. Uh, if you look at my previous update video, you'll see um, I had this little box and you have a little slider. You can move it left and right. Um, and that's, that's yeah, it, it doesn't, you can't, Basically, this way of looking at scalars gives you a good visualization of division uh, and multiplication and addition and subtraction and how those all interact with one another. Um, and I strongly suspect that uh, essentially having a widget like this embedded into an environment like this uh, could allow you to do lots of interesting things. Um, so yes, that's pretty, oh, it's worth saying with this. So. Uh, what you have down here inside of the circle is a bunch of points, and these points are essentially points in the Beltrami-Klein uh, disk, which is a model of two-dimensional hyperbolic space. Um, it's been, yeah. So do, doing the quantum mechanics, pro the, the quantum computing project that uh, you can see in another update video, um, I learned a bit about uh, the interaction between hyperbolic geometry 
in n dimensions and conformal transformations in n minus one dimensions. So in this case, we've got the Beltrami Klein disk, which is two dimensional, and we've got uh, then two minus one, we've got the one dimensional line here. Um, this thing that I made, uh, one second, this thing, uh, you might have seen in the other video. So um, these are uh, hyperbolic, these are um, movements and rotations of hyperbolic space. So this is the gen, uh, the three-dimensional uh, Beltrami Klein model. Uh, this is modeling three-dimensional hyperbolic space. Um, and therefore, it models also conformal uh, it, Euclidean two-dimensional space with conformal transformation. So any transformation that I do inside of this ball um, is uh, will correspond to some uh, conformal transformation down on the plane, which you may also know as a Mobius transformation. Uh, maybe watch the fun video, which I'll link in the description. Um, uh, Mobius transformations revealed. So yeah, if you imagine, so you can see that this whole thing is happening inside of a sphere. If we um, forget about the things inside of the sphere and only think about how these disks cut the surface of the sphere. Um, yeah, th so th imagine drawing circles wherever these disks cut the surface of the sphere, get rid of all the disks, put a point at the top here, and then project all of these, li all of these circles on the surface uh, down onto the plane. Uh, that will give you Euclidean two-dimensional space and um, Transformations of these disks will con correspond to conformal transformations. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. And yes, it, so it's nice that in... Uh, I eventually plan to port this to virtual reality. In some sense, it already does work there. Um, and it turns out that, uh, you know, a, a hyperbolic, you know, ro movement and rotation will be... Uh, can be a movement and rotation of your hand. So you can kind of get a lot of power out of just a single hand movement um, uh, from doing this. So either changing a scalar by just thinking about um, a two-dimensional slice of this ball, um, or thinking about a, uh, uh, yeah, a, a two-dimensional conformal transformation um, using this ball, uh, using the surface of the ball. Uh, yeah, so that's about where I am with that. Uh, hope you enjoyed this update.